today is starting unit three. Um, yesterday we went over the beginning of unit three. We did a little bit of a review. And we talked about our vocab. We talked about our integer, meaning pretty much the number line, all whole numbers and their opposites. We talked about the exponent. Right here, examples, six, that's the number or variable that represents the number of times that the base is used. We talked about the base here, the four would be the base, six is the exponent. What else do we know six to be? Yesterday we learned six to be our, what is it? Power. Our power, exactly. Nice job. We talked about a coefficient. The coefficient is the number with the variable. And if we have just x all by itself, what's the coefficient of x if it's all by itself? One. One. There's that assumed one in there. And again, we just said the exponent is also known as the power. We could say this four to the second power. We could say this four to the power of two. Or what's another way we could say this? Four what? We just got done with this in unit one. Squared. Nice, nice memory. All right, let's go through these. There's, uh, we need to point these out. Did we go over these yesterday? We did not, did we, this group? Yeah, we did, yeah. 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 And we talked about these tricky ones yesterday. And why are these tricky? No parentheses. Right, there makes a difference between parentheses and this one has no parentheses. So that means this means a negative three times a negative three, which equals a? Nine. Positive 9. Here the squared sign goes only to the 3. So that means like a negative times 3 times 3. What does that equal? Negative and that's like a negative 1. So we get a negative 9 for our answer there. So the tricky ones you need to watch. The parentheses make a huge difference when we're working with exponents. Now, did we do these together yesterday? This page? Yeah. What do we get? Let's do this one then again today. Well, well let's go quick. We did these yesterday. This is what? 14 x to the, we add our exponents, second power. What does this turn into? 1x cubed, or how else can I write that one? X. Just x cubed, nice. You guys are on it today. How about this one? What did we get for this one? Since the negative's on the outside here, we get negative, which is like a negative 1, and a negative assumed 1, times how many 2x's? Six. To the fourth power, so it's four of them. 1, 2, 3, 4. What is 2 times 2? Two? Times 2? Times 2? And 16 times this negative 1 out here, the negative? Negative. And how many x's do we have? 4. Because there's 1, 2, 3, 4. The fourth power. Alright, on to the rest of the unit. Lesson 1. Now if I have, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I have x to the fifth power times x to the second power. To write that out in expanded form, all that means is, well, I have five x's, one, two, three, four, five, times two more x's, one, two. What would my answer be if I were, if I were to simplify that? What would that equal? That would be equal x to the seventh power because we add our exponents. In words, products of power, what does that mean? To multiply two powers that have the same base, you add <coughs> the exponents. What does it mean with an algebraic model? That means if I have x to the a power times x to the b power, what does that mean? That equals x to the, what? 
x to the a power times x to the b power equals x to the <laughs> not c power, that was in Pythagorean theorem. Not, not a b, but you're close, because that would mean a times b if we wrote it like that. What are we doing? Adding. That means x to the a plus b. We add our exponents. That's what it would mean in algebraic form right there. All right, let's practice. All right. On your whiteboard, well, first make sure you get all your answers in your notes. Hold your answer up on your whiteboard, please. What do we get if we take x cubed times x to the sixth power? Hold up your answers on your whiteboards. Nice job. Because these have assumed ones, so one times one is still what? One times one is still one, nice. And then how many x's do I have? Three plus six is nine. How else can I write that and still get full credit? X to the ninth power. Now make sure you make your nine your exponent little. I'm getting answers that look like that. That looks like it's a coefficient behind it or something, so don't write it. Make sure I can tell that it is an exponent. All right, hold up your answers for this now. What would you what would you get for that answer? So this simplifies to 8 squared times 8 to the 4th equals 8 to the 6th power. Because we don't multiply before we do our exponents. So the base stays the same and we add our exponents. They just always stay the same. Yep. But now like if we had 4 to the 2nd power, 2nd power plus 8 to the 2nd power, what would I have to do there? Yeah. I'd have to turn these into what they are. I can't put them together until you do your exponents. And that's the same here if they're the same number. You can't put, you can't multiply them. Like I can't go 4 times 8 and get 32, right? Yeah. What is 4 squared? 16 plus 64. That's what I would have to do to get my answer. Otherwise, what is 16, oops, times, times. What is 16 times 64? I'll show you the difference in your answers that you'll get. 16 times 64 is what? Calculator people, who's the fast ones? What do you get? 1,024. Now look what happens if we um, multiply them right away. You get 4 times 8 is 32 to the 4th power. What's 32 times 32 times 32 times 32? What is it? Is it the same answer? Yeah, one million something is not going to work. So that's why you can't multiply these bases until you do the exponents. What do we get here? Equals y to the what power? 11. Nope. 12 power, because this y here has an exponent of 1, even though it's not there, it's still assumed, so it's y to the 12th power. <coughs> power. What does this equal? x to the 16th power, because 6 and 2 and 8 is 16. How about here? Do I multiply first when there's exponents? Nope, but we have the same base, so what's my base? Negative 5, because it's in parentheses, to the, nice, so to the 7th power. Can I write it like that? Am I good? No, because that means it's just 5 to the 7th power. What do I have to do? That has to include everything. It has to have the parentheses. Don't let that get points taken off on your tests and quizzes. How about here? Y to the what power? Because 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 10. Nice job. What do we get here? To simplify each expression, leave your answer in exponential form. That means you don't have to work it out. And obviously here we can't because we don't know what x is. So what is my answer here? x to the 14 power. Nice. How about here? What are you going to get? 4 
Can I can I multiply my one and my four? Yes. Yes, because they do not have what? Exponents with them. The exponent is with the x, so I can multiply these because they don't have an x with them. So four times or an exponent with them. Four times one is four. four. And then x cubed times x to the fifth is x to the eight. Because we added three plus five is the eight. So it's four x to the eighth power. What do I get for c? Six x to the fifth power. We add them, we don't multiply them. Nice. How about D? Make sure you're getting these written in your notes. Right, because a negative five times one is still negative five. Negative five times another one is still a negative five. So we have negative five x to the Yep, because four, six, and don't forget that one to the eleventh power. And E. Hold up your answer on your whiteboards for what you get for E. All right, so we got that. A negative one times two is a negative two times six would be a negative twelve. X to the three plus four plus two is ninth power. Now we get to the fun ones. Let's figure out the area of this rectangle. The rectangle, what do we do? Length times the width. So we take x to the fifth power times x to the second power, and we get what for the area of this rectangle? X to the seventh power. X to the seventh power. Here, length times width. So I take my 12, I'm going to write it bigger, y cubed times x squared. What do I get? What do I get for my number? What am I going to multiply for my coefficients? 1 and 12 equals positive 12. How many x's do I have? I've got 1 here, 2 here, so x to the 1, 1 plus 2, x to the 1, x to the 2, 1 plus 2 is 3. And then we have our y, the y here, y to the third power. So we have 12 x cubed y cubed. Here, 7 x squared y squared times 2xy, and you might want to put your little 1 exponents up there so you don't forget about them. So what's my coefficient answer? 2 times 7 is? 14. 14. How many x's do I have? 2 and 1, which is? 3. How many y's do I have? 2 and 1, which is also 3. So 14x cubed, y cubed. Now we go to volume. It's the same thing, except for it's length times width times height. So you, we get to do three of them. All three of these multiplied by each other. 9x cubed times 4x squared times x. What does that equal? Well, what's 9 times 4 times 1? What do we get? 36. Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Now, how many x's do I have? Six. Because I have three, and I have two, and I have one. Add those all together to the sixth power. Last one. Get the right answer for this one, and you can start your homework, which is pages two and three in your packet. So, 5 times 5 times 5 was 125. And then how many x's? I have 3 plus 3 plus 3, which is 9. So 125x to the 9th power. You may start your homework.